Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish Gaming. This is Neon, this is Gaming News on Clownfish Gaming, and we've got some big news, I, I guess. Uh, the Deus Ex game that was in development for two years has been canceled. Yes, it's been canceled and social media is mourning. It might actually be a mercy killing, though, uh, judging by some of the stuff that has been said about it by the uh, voice actor of Adam Jensen. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about this before we get into it any further. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Like us wherever you found us. We try to keep our gaming news under 10 minutes because we know you're all very busy. And I'm very busy. So we're not going to ramble too much. This is, uh, believe it or not, coming from Kotaku. And uh, it's Embracer Group. Again, you know, Embracer Group, the company that's been buying up all these game studios and then, like, firing everybody. Well, apparently this was their decision. A uh, new Deus Ex game reportedly canceled by that gaming company. Swedish holdings company Embracer Group has seemingly canceled an in-development Deus Ex game at IDOS Montreal. Uh, Battle gaming company Embracer Group has canceled an in-development Deus Ex games that IDOS was working on, according to a new report from Bloomberg. That'd probably be Jason Schreier, who's on top of like all this stuff. Uh, he's actually one of the few like really decent gaming journalist or one of the few real gaming journalists out there apparently uh, the untitled and unannounced rpg that's it nobody knew they were working on it the untitled and unannounced rpg was reportedly in pre-production for two years and was set to enter production later this year an anonymous source told bloomberg the last deus x game was 2016 uh, was in 2016, it was Deus Ex Mankind Divided. The cancellation comes not long after the Swedish conglomerate snatched up a bunch of publishers and studios and failed to secure a $2 billion deal and subsequently laid off 5% of its workforce. And according to Bloomberg, more layoffs could be hitting Eidos in the wake of the Deus Ex game cancellation. That does not surprise me at all. Remember that Embracer Group gobbled up a bunch of these studios. They've been shutting them down like crazy. Uh, Saints Row developer uh, Volition got shut down completely, especially after the last game tanked. Uh, the studio that created Time Splitters, Free Radical Design, also got shut down. Um, they're closing some other studios. This is a Campfire Cabal. This was back in August of last year. So they bought up a bunch of studios that create triple a or double a titles and then they just subsequently shut them all down it's it's very weird it, it's become like triple a game studio highlander and i don't think it's sustainable meanwhile we see games like vampire survivors and pal world doing very very well and you don't need to spend hundreds of millions of dollars to develop a title you just have to give people a good game. And in fact, there's been so much disappointment with AAA titles lately that a lot of PC gamers are going for the indie titles. I, I play almost exclusively indie titles. I don't, I don't mess around with the AAA stuff because it's usually bloated. Uh, there are a lot of uh, politics being injected into it. And of course, you know, microtransactions. Everybody loves microtransactions, DLC, all that stuff. Anyway, back to the article from Kotaku. Embracer has spent the last few years gobbling up studios like the fattest hippo in Hungry Hungry Hippos. Yeah, it's true. In 2021, it became Europe's most valuable video game development, uh, developer after it announced nearly 30 takeovers within a year. 30 takeovers in a year. That is not sustainable. I don't care who you are. Freaking, if you're freaking Disney, that's not sustainable. I don't know what the hell they were thinking. Uh, they grew from a relatively unknown uh, entity into a massive monolith in a short span of time. I'd never heard of them before. They just like came out of nowhere and just started buying everything, including comic book companies. They bought they bought Dark Horse Comics. You know, if they're shutting down game studios, could they shut down Dark Horse Comics? Maybe because they bought Dark Horse, probably thinking, you know, oh, we'll get the uh, the Hellboy IP. We'll get, uh, what else does Dark Horse have? Like Umbrella Academy, stuff like that. And we'll make games out of it. And they're shutting these studios down. So bought Borderlands developer Gearbox in February of 2021. Aspire Media in April of 2021. Aspire Media for years did the uh, remasters, remixes, uh, ports of games for Macintosh. That's how I knew them. Because I was a, a Mac user back in the day because of graphic design. And almost... 
like all my games came from Aspire <laughs> because they were like the only company out there that was actually porting PC games. And we had a very, very limited selection, didn't we? So I actually had to, I remember back in the day, I had to partition my hard drive uh, just so I had a, a, a Windows section where I could play Windows games. Uh, and that was a pain in the butt. Oh, those were the good old days. Anyway, um, yeah, they bought uh, 3D Realms Go and Ghost Ship Games, Crystal Dynamics, Eidos, Square Enix, Montreal, uh, the rights to the Lord of the Rings franchise in August of 2022. And they're supposedly, they were planning on making a new Lord of the Rings movie that has nothing to do with the Amazon series. Like these people are not, I mean, I wouldn't put these people in charge of making me a sandwich, let alone. <laughs> let alone put them in charge of Tolkien. I'm just saying, like, they don't know what the hell they're doing. Since then, the studio has been a poster child for what happens when you rapidly grow, buy up, and then consolidate other companies and ultimately fail to secure a $2 billion partnership with Saudi Arabia's public investment fund. In other words, late-stage capitalism. You know, normally I am a capitalist. Uh, people that watch me on the main channel especially know that uh, I am pro-capitalism. That being said, I don't disagree with this statement. It's become Highlander. And what happens is all these companies gobble up other companies and then you know, they do it to get rid of the competition and it's not sustainable. Yeah, you know, we need competition. We need other studios. Now, the bright side is if you're an indie game developer, things have never been better. You've never had a better opportunity than you have right now to release a kick-ass game. All you got to do is give people a decent game at a decent price and you know, get the word out there about it. And, and you're golden, man. You're golden because people are tired of this. They're tired of it. Um, yeah. So we get to the bottom here, and here's the post from their official Twitter account. For me personally, it's, it is a it is crucial that the restructuring program is carried out with compassion, respect, and integrity. This is Laura's Wingen Force. God, this is insane. Uh, a lot of these projects unannounced. You know, now what's interesting is the voice actor who played uh, Am Jensen said that that he was never made aware of there being another game. So if that's the case, it probably did not focus on Jensen. And if that's the case, I think gamers probably would have rejected it anyway. Uh, this has come from PC Gamer. Adam Jensen, voice actor, says canceled Deus Ex likely wasn't a Jensen story anyway, and that I got to be honest, I gave up on it a long time ago. Yeah, so it wouldn't have, and you know, would have probably been a strong female lead, I'm sure, because that's the way these, that's the way these franchises are going, right? The all new, all different. Uh, so the guy who plays uh, Jensen, I cannot pronounce his name. Uh, to to fix to face? Uh, I don't know. I can't. I can't pronounce his name. Elias. I'm gonna call him Elias. Uh, seems understandably convinced that whatever Deus Ex project Eidos was cooking up wasn't even going to be a continuation of Adam Jensen's story, which began back in 2011. I wasn't under NDA and they never called me, he said. Uh, if they had been working on a Deus Ex for two years and they still hadn't contacted me, there's a very good chance it wasn't a Jensen story anyway. That is another shot through the heart. I don't know what is. Um, they said the Deus Ex games weren't perfect, but then again, blasphemous as it may be to say it, neither was the original, but they had their own charm. But yeah, it sounds like it might have been a mercy killing. And they might have looked at this, especially after what happened with Saints Row and been like, you know what, we can't fundamentally change a franchise like this. It's not going to work anyway. We're throwing good money after bad. It's not worth it. Let's pull the plug, guys. Let's pull the plug. And I'm going to pull the plug on this video. So we're going to wrap this up. Please subscribe. I'll talk to you later.